Welcome back. Signpost has developed an accurate breast cancer screen, which does not rely on an image reader. Now, to find out more about this innovative technology, we've got the CEO and founder of Signpost, Peter Blaney, with us, and also Family Office Insight CEO, Arthur Bavallis. Great to have you both. Thank you, Jane. So, uh, Peter, how does Breast Defense is the name of the technology that your company, Signpost, has developed, right? Correct. How does that work? It's a um, molecular diagnostic. It relies on um, sp specific addresses being um, activated on the epigenome, which is the dust that settles on your genes. Hmm. Um, and so it turns genes on and off. And we found um, a small set of addresses that are virtually, well, it's 99.9% .9 if you have these addresses activated, you have invasive breast cancer, regardless of the subtype regardless of the stage. So n don't need a mammogram. Well, how, how does the test go? Is it a blood test? It's a blood test. Okay. Um, but yes, you, you'll... You still will need a mammogram. Well, there's, okay. there's going to be, you know, there's, we're not trying to displace I mammograms. See. We're trying to assist. Okay. Um, so if you've got a mammogram and there's a suspicious lump, I see. there's still a hard time determining whether or not that lump is invasive breast cancer or benign and can be left alone. So another diagnostic tool. To help find breast cancer. To give you certainty. Okay, okay. We answer a really simple question. Yes. Is this invasive breast cancer or is it benign? And that's the question that the pathologists and radiologists and oncologists and surgeons have told us over and over again that they have the most difficulty determining in many cases. Okay. And you also have been a winner uh, with our Arthur's Family Office Insights group uh, for yes. your business. So, uh, Arthur, what was it about Signpost and their new technology? I mean, this seems like revolutionary stuff. Um, so, mm -hmm. the Family Office Funding Challenge, which is the component of Family Office Insights where uh, entrepreneurs compete, it, uh, I will admit that uh, Peter and his group came to the top with a big margin away from everybody else. And there's lots of metrics that we use and we don't have time to go into now how that happened. But clearly if you could, and, and one of the things that I was interested in asking you is that wouldn't it make sense to do it the other way around once this is perfected, mm -hmm. to do your test first and then do the mammogram second? Well, I think that is in fact what will often happen. Um, the mammographers, if they get the results from our test, they will find where the cancer is, it would be much easier for them. So I think they're quite complementary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it uh, detect all kinds of tumors or? It's, at this stage, we're focused on breast cancer, okay. but it will detect any subtype at any stage from one to four. Okay, and so then my question is, why isn't everybody using this yet? Because it hasn't been completed. We're okay. raising the money to validate the test I see. now. Okay, so you need um, to scale and? Yes. So mm -hmm. the, the normal um, procedures that you have to go through to validate a, a test, we're, mm -hmm. we're completing. What, do, what will that take? Is that an FDA approved thing? or? No, this is a CLIA yeah. test. So it's um, under different legislation. So it's not under the FDA, although the FDA does watch mm -hmm. what, what happens with CLIA tests. But almost all of the new molecular biology tests that come out are LDTs. They call them lab mm -hmm. developed tests and they work under CLIA legislation. So it can get to the market much faster and faces less regulation than the FDA. Interesting. So what's much faster mean, for example? Uh, well, it means, you know, half a year instead of three or four that, years. That's much, much faster. Oh, yeah. And you're also using big data to help with diagnosis. How does that fit? Well, that's this? how we got the addresses that we need. Um, there are six billion nucleotides in human DNA huh. and how do you find the right addresses in six billion? Um, it takes big math, and fortunately, there are huge databases out there now, like the Genetic Data Commons and so on, mm -hmm. and the C Human Cancer Genome Atlas, mm -hmm. um, where thousands and thousands and thousands of people have had their genomes fully sequenced, and these are publicly available databases that any researcher can make use of. Should we be optimistic about the application of this type of technology that you discovered and, and the ability to, to cull through these databases for other, uh, um, what do you call them? The nucleotides. Nucleotides for other problems? Absolutely. Um, what's really come about over the last few years is that what they call next-gen sequencers. Um, it used to take a decade to sequence a human genome mm -hmm. and cost billions. 
Now you can do it for under a thousand dollars, and then you can do it under an hour. And so this stuff is really, it, it blows Moore's law out the window. The advances that have been made in um, the human genome are unprecedented in the history of science. So walk me through the process. Let's um, like say in 10 years, um, and I go into see my doctor for an annual exam. How do you envision this working, and how is it being implemented into offices? Wow, when you say 10 years, that is so far out. Okay, five, three. Okay, three years. <laughs> three years I can handle. Ten okay. years, it's too far. Um, the whole, all the platforms. There'll be so many more developments. In yeah, there'll be oh, amazing. Absolutely. Okay, three years. So in three years, I think what will happen is there will be. Um, blood tests available, blood draws um, that, that people will take, and you need a fair amount of blood, um, maybe, you know, uh, well, the, the like standard vial. vial. Uh -huh. You need a full vial, and you'll exhaust that vial on probably one test, but there will be multiple tests out there for all kinds of diseases. I have a daughter, so it's wonderful to see what kind of world she's going into. So thank you so much, yeah, Arthur. We're super and excited. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.